So I've got something in mind that I wanted to go through today. It's a new product called grow360.ai that we are implementing in our own agency and has become part of a performance marketing package that we're that we've started offering to clients, but just a very small select few while we test everything out. But I want to see before I dive into that, if there's anything specific that you would like to look at since it's you, you've got us one-on-one. So <laughs> actually, aside from encountering AI and things that it's being used for, I don't really have, I'm trying to learn, just learn about it generally. So how okay. it would be, how it could be used, what applications might be for any, anything that you think is worth talking about. I'm happy to listen. Okay, great. This will probably be beneficial then. I So I'm just going to walk through some things that I've been using it for in my own agency from a lead standpoint and then a nurturing those leads standpoint. And Mm -hmm. so it's a mix of tools that I'm integrating. And so I'll just show you, we'll kind of start from the beginning I'm going to share my screen really quick and just walk you through and feel free to interrupt me because I, when I, once I start sharing my screen, I can't, everybody's really small on the side, so I don't actually see. So just say, and and then this is going to be training for Cheryl too. So, you know, Cheryl's on my team and Cheryl helps me set these things up, but with this new grow360.ai platform. So we that is the name that I've given it. So we have actually like custom designed it for our agency and it integrates with a lot of different things that we're doing. And I think it could be really powerful for clients once we get it all figured out and streamlined ourselves. So okay. Yeah, right. It's an evolving <laughs> so thing, right? It really is. And it changes so fast. It's crazy. Okay. So let me do this. All right. So as business owners, we, one of the things that we constantly have to do is work on our own lead flows. And so we, as a company, we do a lot of things that are very traditional from the standpoint of referral marketing, Google pay-per-click, social media marketing. We run ads in local publications. We're part of the chambers, all of that stuff. One of the things that we have not done as an agency until this year is cold and lukewarm outreach. But what I committed to this year was leveraging AI to do that for our agency, because what that does is it gives us the ability to scale. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to show you one of the the products that we have that is AI driven and how it's working right now for our agency. I just have to find my folder. So I've got a folder here called good news. Okay. I named it that. Because what we've done is we've added some tracking. It's called Smart Visitor ID on the back end of our website. And so it uses AI technology to actually give us data around the people who visit our website and don't fill out a form. Like we've got the lead capture mechanisms on our site. We've got the lead magnets, all of that. But those don't convert 100%. They don't convert anywhere near 100%. If you, on a lead magnet and requests like that, if you get a 5% conversion rate on your traffic, that's generally considered pretty good on the first visit. Could you give me a brief definition of a lead magnet? What do you, what an example? Yes. Thank you. So let me just show you. It's, It's just easier to illustrate it. Sure. Here. So I'm going to say, this is one we just launched for a client the other day. So United Veteran Benefits, they have a new lead magnet that pops up. So this is a a guide that people can download when they visit their site. So what happens is people that enter their email here, they download the guide, and then the email gets added into your marketing funnel. Okay. So that's a lead magnet. So MSW Interactive Designs, we have a few of them on our website. So as I'm just have to sit here for a minute for it to pop up, it doesn't come up right away. So over here on this Mm -hmm. one, this one's a little bit less obtrusive. Mm -hmm. So this one actually converts pretty well. We get people who download our ideal customer persona template. So that's a lead magnet. 
Okay, got it. So the idea is people come to your site, they might not want to request a quote yet, they're still doing their research. So it's a much lower commitment thing. They don't want to talk to you, but you still want to capture their stuff. So that's the 5% mechanism. And then we do, and this is also the form of AI, the might as well just show you the whole lead flow system. So then we use a platform and we do this for our clients and we do it for ourselves. We use a platform called AdRoll. And what happens is when someone comes to the website, then a cookie is written to their computer. And what it does then is it lets AdRoll know where they were on the website and what they were looking at. Okay. So do you have to I'm get the permission to leave the cookie? A lot of places are asking now about what you permit yeah. it. How does that work? No. Um, so the places that are asking are um, generally places that serve um, markets that are out of the country. So the I European see. Union requires it. The United oh. States does not. Okay. All right. No, we don't have to get their permission, but we can, <laughs> but okay. we don't. So this is Admiral. And so you can see over, this is from March 31st to September 11th. I've spent mm -hmm. $1,600. Ignore this because I don't have trigger set up on paid things, but I'm going to go to my uh, campaign. I'm going to show you. Once the cookie has been written to their machine, then these ads come up and follow you around the internet and say, okay, you were interested in MSW at one point and we're still here, come back. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to show you here the retargeting in this period, March 31st to September 11th, my ads for this investment have gotten 148,000 impressions. So that would be like on news sites, weather sites, when you're online and these ads just show in context of whatever. Yeah, ironically, last time we talked, the same day, that night I went to my ESPN fantasy football to do the draft and your banner popped up on the top. There you go. So yeah. that that was retargeting in action. Mm -hmm. So these are the ads um, and we have a variety of them running. And then you can see over here, move all this stuff away. You can see it shows the spend, but... I can never find the little slider over here on the right-hand column. Let me just export it. You can actually see which ones are performing better. And then what we do is we turn off the low performing ones and redirect funds toward the ones that are performing better. Makes sense. Uh, and okay. then as you add more offers in right now, we're working on building ads for um, a United Veteran, the one I showed you to promote that lead magnet. So people who had been to her website before are now going to start to see this lead magnet to come in and we've got this, this new thing you can download and come back and download it. So anytime you add a new offer into the mix, you want to add it into your retargeting to drive people back to your website and hopefully convert them over time. Here's the, the chart. So you can see the ads that are getting the most impressions and then the mm -hmm. click throughs, which ads are driving click throughs. Where this is important is when you're, if you're trying to promote an offer with a retargeting ad, because you mm -hmm. want to look at this data and see which ones are actually working. Okay. So that is the retargeting component. So let me get out of here. Okay. Something isn't, there it is. Get out of here. Okay. So we do the retargeting and then, so these people that come to the website did not fill out a form and I can see this guy here. I see these are all emails that I've got. You mean they didn't so, respond to the magnet? They Right. They just came to the website for the first time for, as a result of something, a referral, okay. an ad. Right. You so know, you whatever. can see who actually comes to your website, even if they don't yes. leave any information. Yes. Got now, it. what I can't do because of the can spam laws is I cannot add them to my email marketing bulk list because that's without, without their permission. Uh, okay. But what I can do is reach out to them one on one. And so okay. that is what we're doing with these now. And this is what we're using AI technologies for. So this person, Energy View Windows, and here's the name of the owner, which I would never have had without this tech. And I've got wow. his phone number and his email address. And I can see 
what he looked at. So he even looked at more than one page. He went to our about page. So something about this business, um, they were interested in us. They found us on Google, um, but did not reach out. What I did now is I went to his website and I just took a quick look at it. I want to see if he's a, a good potential client. It goes both ways, right? Sure. He, he might not be. So I want to look mm -hmm. and he looks like a decent sized company, 25 years in business, does a lot of things. This is great. Good testimonials. Not that it matters, but he happens to be in Missouri. So my shots are, my shot is probably pretty good at connecting with him. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, cause he just went to the about page and his website's not bad. He might not want a website. Maybe he wants something else. Maybe he wants social media services or whatever. I, I don't know at this point, mm -hmm. but what I could find out over time, cause this just was this morning at 7 44 AM. So you get these alerts in real time. If he comes back which he could because now he's in my retargeting flow. So he's going to start seeing my ads, follow him around. <laughs> and I can also, if he's a good candidate for what we do, which I determined he is, I can add him into my Grow360 AI platform, which I have done. So I'm going to reduplicate this tab and I'll show you. This is essentially a CRM. I don't want to lose those. So let me save that customer relationship management database. Mm -hmm. But because of the AI component and the, the depth of the CRM platform, this actually replaces a lot of stuff that a lot of small businesses use like MailChimp for constant contact, HubSpot, Zoho, text message marketing, review automation. This platform has all of it in one place and it is not super expensive. So this is why I've become a big proponent of this and have switched everything over to it in my agency and I'm recommending it to clients. This, what I did, if I'm going to go to opportunities, so this is our lead flow. And so here is, I just added, here's the guy. I just added him this morning because he's definitely a lead, a good candidate. I added tags. So I named him leads, some kind of marketing. I don't know what kind of marketing yet. And I labeled him with smart visitor, a tag, like attach tags to him. And then what I'm doing, and I'm only doing this now because I haven't built out this flow in this platform yet. So now I'm building out a flow which is going to apply to him and everyone like him. I so see. as soon as I add him to the system, I can say, okay, we're going to build a workflow. And when someone gets added this tag with smart visitor, then I want these things to happen. And <laughs> this, allows me, this allows me to create a goal. The goal with these cold, I'm going to call them cold or lukewarm leads because we've never spoken to him. Mm -hmm. Um, if he actually comes back and fills out a quote request on our website, so he actually completes the, the thing that I'm trying to drive him to do, then he will automatically pop out of this workflow If he at any point, not just in at this point. So at any point in this workflow that the AI knows and pops him out of it so he doesn't get all these emails that I'm going to send. So the first email... Once he's tagged, he comes into the flow. And so he's going to get this email and I've already created it. And so it pulls in oh, his wow. first name. Okay. Okay. And then I- So this protocol, him. this is basically a protocol that's created based on how you've defined him, based mm -hmm. on the way he interacted with your website that particular time. Yes. And so then I've got a wait mechanism in here. So I'm, then it's going to wait a couple of days. And what I want to show you now is how I'm using AI. I mean, that's an AI app. This is an AI app. So this is chat GPT. So I came into chat GPT and I used my, I can't remember if you were on the training where I showed everybody how to create their own custom GPT. I was not. Okay, so I built a custom GPT for MSW. 
So it's called the Entrepreneur's Marketing Lab. And so this GPT is, even though it's chat GPT, this custom GPT is trained on our approach and everything that we do, our philosophy around story brand, all the things that we do that are different. Yeah, I mean, those want- that's actually some of what I want to learn about. So you, what you did is you fed it something to make it do what you wanted to do is what I yes. correct. Yes. So this, when I want to speak in the language of MSW Interactive Designs to MSW Interactive Designs prospects, I use the Entrepreneur's Marketing Lab because it is trained on us specifically. Yeah. And I can show you how to do that. So what I did is I just told it, like, I, I want to create an email marketing funnel geared toward people who visited our website. These are people who have expressed interest, but did not fill out the quote request. We have several things we can offer them, but I would just really like to acknowledge that they visited and offer a strategy call. And then I copied and pasted. This This is information from our quote request. And I gave it that. Go ahead. This is input to the chat GTP to make it work. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. This is my prompt to build this funnel that I'm for this, for the smart visitor tag people. I said, here's some information from our website. So I just copied and pasted. This is all just copy and paste from our website. Okay. Uh, That whole block, just copy and paste. Mm -hmm. And then I said, from there in the funnel, we can invite them to our two times per month marketing meetups. We can invite them to our AI and marketing mastery. And I gave them the days that those happen. We can send them articles in our blog that cover a host of topics. And I shared the URL. I said, we can invite them to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And I gave it the URL. And then I said, this is all just one quote. I'm just telling it, here's all the stuff. Now, help me write a sequence of five to seven emails, not salesy, just helpful. That was my prompt. (laughs) Wow. And so ChatGPT came back and I said, here's a draft of five emails. And mind you, again, it's been trained on our strategies. It's writing in a way that we would generally write already. It, how does that not, training how does that training take place? Is it more somehow you're feeding your methodology into it? Is that right? Yeah, I'll show you that. I'll, I'll come when we get through this and I'll go back and I'll show you the custom GPT. Yeah, aspect. okay. This is fascinating. We, do you have the do you have the twenty dollar a month chat GPT subscription? I don't. Okay. So you would need that to make a custom GPT, but it is okay. absolutely worth it in my opinion. Okay, sure. So it came back and it gave me thanks for visiting our website. I noticed you're checking out our services but didn't request a quote. Totally get it. Choosing the right <laughs> partner for your website can be a big decision, blah, blah, blah. So it starts giving me these emails, this series of emails. Wow. Okay. And then I said, this is okay, but the first email, he's not really going to know who it's from because you didn't mention the company name. So think about this. He came in this morning and then tomorrow he's going to get this email. Thanks for visiting our website. He has no idea who this is from. So I told ChatGPT that. So this is where the human brain really matters. And then I said, and we also don't know for sure that it's a website that he's looking for. So ChatGPT assumed that, but we have other marketing services. Mm, So I don't want to assume that he's looking for a website. So now it's just a conversation. ChatGPT came back and said, thanks (laughs) for the clarification. Let's revise. So now it says, um, thanks for stopping by. How can we help? Thanks for visiting. I noticed you checked out our services and I just wanted to reach out. And now whether you're interested in a new website, improving your online presence, blah, blah, blah. One of the ways, blah, blah, blah. So I interrupted it. It was going to do, and I said, no, that sounds salesy. I don't want that. I I want it to be more of the approach. How can I serve you? I saw you were here. How can I help you? That sort of tone. Okay. So then it adjusted the tone. So how can we support your business? Now it's come back with, I noticed you recently visited and I want to check to see how we can best support you, which I prefer. I know that just sounds more like Mm -hmm. how I would speak. We offer a range of services. I'd love to offer you a free marketing strategy call. And so I think it did a really good job here. Um, This is more of the message that I want to send at first on that email. And so then I was like, yes, now let's create a series with that tone. 
Um, now it did not listen to me here. I said, no need to make the intro and signature lines in such a large, bold font. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why it did that. And so I'm like, let's just keep it the same. And then I gave it my name so it could just insert the name. And I told it that it's important that it's clear that the strategy calls are with me and not a salesperson. And I gave it the link where the strategy call is. And then I told it because I forgot to tell it the first time if they don't want to get on a call, but would just rather have me record a website review and send it to them. I'm happy to do that too. So okay. then it comes back and it does, it gave me a really nice email. So it, it modified it, put my name in there. And then it said, if you prefer not to have a live call and then it closed it out and then it gave me the series. So now I already built email one. So now I'm going to take email two and I'm going to go back into my, my thing and I'm going to say, okay, so here's my email one. Then I added a wait mechanism and now I'm going to add another action. So I'm just going to show you over here, all the things. So the action is we can create add contacts. We can assign tasks. We can send wow. an email. We can send a text. We can give someone a task to call. We can send a DM through social media. And this is all done through this platform, which is incredible. We can send a message through Google My Business. We can send an internal notification to someone on the team. You can see all of the things. It's and then amazing. you can have logic in here to branch. So if they do this, like if they click on a particular link in the email, then I want them to to go here and we're going to get them into a different funnel. If they do this, then I want them to do that. So you have all of that built in and then it's tied to chat GPT. You can also have it automatically set up appointments. You can have it, if they, you could put in a thing here that says, if they type remove or remove me from your list, then you can actually have it automatically remove them from your opportunity flow. You can um, integrate payments with the emails if you're trying to actually sell them something through the email. All of this stuff, it's really super powerful. So I'm just going to show you how simple it is. So I'm just going to add, so I'm going to add an email and I'm going to say, here's the, I'm going to have it send an email. Here's the second one. And it's going to be from me again, from my email address. Here's the subject. Let me double check that subject. That looked like a repeat to me, but I just want to make sure since I'm putting it in here. I need to find my chat GPT tab. There it is. Okay. So I'm going to copy this and I'm not going to use the template. This is just going to be a normal email that comes through. I'm going to paste this in here. And then what I can do is I can insert custom values. So it's going to insert his first name. So it's personalized email. I'm just going to do some formatting really quick and then I'm going to go get my link for my quote. And now all I have to do is set this up one time and then this is going to happen. This is going to go to anyone that I mm -hmm. put in here, but they're all going to seem very personalized. So it's just completely automated. And then this is nice. You can send a test. So you can see what it looks like. Mm -hmm. So you can make sure everything works. <laughs> right. That's all, all built in. Super easy. From uh, such fail. Let's see. What did I miss? Oh, subject can't be empty. Let's do that again. Okay, so we're gonna come over to email and we're gonna look at this really quickly. So there it is. And so I can test all the links and everything, but that looks pretty good to me amazing yeah so that's what cheryl and i are going to build out the rest of this flow a series of five to seven emails mm -hmm. that these people are automatically going to get and i just want to show you a couple more things here with this smart visitor id thing so i went through ahead of this call and it was just looking so you can see here we've got 
So Weiss Insurance is one that we just sent a contract to. And so this is this is Intel that is super valuable. So we've been talking to Weiss Insurance for a while. And I can see that they went and visited our website portfolio. So this would have been during their decision process. Um, so this was on September 4th. They just reached out to us two days ago to go ahead and send them the contract. Multiple times on the 4th, this was probably multiple people looking at our web design portfolio. They spent a pretty good amount of time there. And then this is the guy consulting that they were working with to make the decision. And he was on our website. So this was a process. They were looking at it on the 3rd also. This is just great intel that I wouldn't have had Right. Otherwise. Yes. <laughs> and then I can see here, so FWBNE, they were on the website and they're in Sedalia. They downloaded one of our, our PDFs. So we actually got them opted in to our email list. The reason I'm pointing out this one is that I can see that they were on our website also on 829. So this is a hot this is a hot prospect here. You know, they they've come back to our website multiple times. And then you can see here on 828, Weiss Insurance was on again. So they were still thinking about hiring us, looking at our website design page. So these are all really good, really good prospects. Pettis County was on our site multiple times. From a business standpoint, the visibility that you get and the contact information, I want to show you Graybar. Graybar is another one who I'm going to add in to get into this flow because they've been on our website multiple times and it's a potentially really good prospect for us. So they're in St. Louis, Fortune 500 company. I've got all these contacts and they have been, they were going through our blogs, spending a lot of time learning on stuff, looking at our videos and they're in this list multiple times. Mm -hmm. So they've never reached out to us. Hmm. But now we are going to reach out to them at this yeah. and try to push push them along. So this is just, to me, a really good leverage of AI on many levels mm -hmm. for um, cold and lukewarm outreach. Do you have any questions about that before I jump No, up? that is all new territory for me and fascinating. It's really good. Yes, it's super powerful. If Now, you have to use the data. You have the sure. data, but it doesn't do you any good if you're not using it. But right. the AI tools now, the fact that we can build flows like this and then just mm -hmm. add them in, we just add them in as a lead and I assign a value based on our marketing packages so I can see and track what's sitting out there. So if you're looking at cash flow, it's, oh, I, all I got to do is follow up and close some of these and we're good. So this is, it's just powerful stuff. It really is. Okay. I'm going to jump back to chat GPT. I'm going to show you. Um, so the Grow360 is something that you purchased? Yeah. So what it is high level is the application. And as an agency, it's, it is specifically built for agencies like mine. So what, and they enable us to offer it to our clients. We use it for ourselves and we offer it to our clients and we just offer it at the same price. So like you can see here, we're in the process of setting all of our existing bunch of clients up in here, the mm -hmm. ones that have the larger packages with us. Yeah. Um, and then what happens is that they have, so like MSW, so we're in the list. So we're using it as a client would but they can all have their own login access to leverage this as a CRM for themselves as well. Right. So that's what that list shows. Mm -hmm. And then, so I'm in my client view, meaning MSW, I am the client. And so from here I can, I set up a dashboard. I can see um, that you connect all of your emails. So I can see uh, conversations through email calendars, all the calendars are integrated in here. It'll tie in with your um, Gmail or Outlook or whatever mm -hmm. um, calendars that you're using. All of your contacts, I'm probably clicking too fast for the internet connection, but <laughs> um, so all of the contacts leads at whatever level go in here and you can see 
like the tags and the last communication. So we have visibility on all of that. I already showed you the opportunities and then you can have them by people. So I've got some of my team who, um, like Amanda, we've got um, projects for her. So she actually has a workflow here. So this is like the workflow for the web design projects. So we can see who she's waiting on. Mm -hmm. Homepage previews due, previews sent, previews approved, and so on, ready yeah. to go. So it it does all of the stuff that all, so many applications do, but all in one place, which mm -hmm. I love. No right. more switching between stuff. And then it also does integrate payments. So we have started sending our documents and contracts through here. And I don't have all of them integrated because we're still, this doesn't replace QBO, but it connects to QuickBooks online if you use that. And then under marketing, you, this was where it will create replacement, like MailChimp for your email news blasts. You can mm -hmm. schedule your social media posts. So you can see we've tested it here. We do use this or to schedule client social media posts. And we can actually then see the whole calendar of posts for them and the statistics, which is great. Then the automations is what you were looking at when I was building that workflow. Let's see what else. Media storage, your brand assets, you can store and share. Reputation automation is available in here. You can see and send invites for reviews through your reputation management and then respond to reviews. So it integrates with all the major review platforms. And then the reporting wow. is available in here. You connect it to Google Analytics and Google Ads. This is really so, powerful. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. It's insane. So it's all in one place, which is just like... It's so just what do your clients have to pay to be able to utilize this in their businesses? So... This is 97 a month and that's it. If you just want to subscribe to it and use it yourself. Hmm. Um, and then with our performance marketing package, which is 1195 a month where we do your social media and blogs and all of that, this is included. Hmm. But if you just want to leverage it on your own, you can do that and just pay for the CRM standalone. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Which That's is, fascinating. Yeah, it's amazing. And I'm telling you, we, so having switched to this, we're in the process because we are actually moving away from HubSpot. HubSpot was what I used before this. And with HubSpot, we were paying 2000 a month for <laughs> this, actually less. Wouldn't you agree, Cheryl? I think I would think let, HubSpot is less than this capability as far as all the data. Absolutely. And it, this is so much more user-friendly too. Mm -hmm. Because this is all brand new to me and it's amazing how easy it is yeah. to maneuver through it. Yeah, it's crazy. So we don't run Facebook ads, but all the Google, if you did, it would all show in here. Mm -hmm. And the fact that everything is in one place just gives you immediate visibility on what's working, what's not working and allows you to track your contacts and all this stuff. So mm -hmm. it's really good. Okay. I'm going to jump over to chat GPT again. Let me click and show you. So in ChatGPT, so this is the paid version, the $20 a month version. So you can see all the, let me go here first. You can see the models that you have to choose from. This is the 4.0. This is the newest ChatGPT that's out there to the public and available on the $20 a month plan. These are the custom GPTs that we built. So the Entrepreneur Lab, Marketing Lab is the one that I built for MSW. I'm going to, let's see here. I'm going to go over here to my GPTs. And so you can see, I don't want to delete it. I want to show you. Oh, stop. I clicked on something that I shouldn't have. Hold on. Let's try it again. Add a GPT. Okay. So with the custom GPTs, you can do it over here. So you have create and configure, and I'll send you the link to the video where I walked through this training. Don't do it under create 
Instead, do it under configure. So what you would do is you just come over and you give it a name and you give it a description. So the name shows here and that, that's what it's called. So if you were to share it with someone, that's what they would see. And then the description is what they see here. The conversation starters are like, if I wanted to share this with a client or with my team, these are the things that I have specifically trained it to do and given it questions. So start creating your marketing plan, get help setting your marketing budget, set your marketing goals, analyze your ad copy. And then under the instructions, which is here, this is where I put in the instructions on how I want it to behave. So it interacts as an interactive assistant and begins by introducing itself, explains its purpose. So if you just came to the GPT, this is what I'm telling it to do. I want it to gather business information. I want it to understand the target audience. I want it to do competitor and market analysis. So these are all the things that I told it I want it to do. <laughs> and I want it to have a friendly professional tone. I want it to allow users to save their progress. And I wanted to offer follow-up consultations uh, with MSW. And then the knowledge that I gave it, these are all documents from MSW. So I gave it my 67 point SEO checklist. So if it's giving SEO advice, it's going to reference this. Then I gave it some sales emails, guidelines that we use, our website sales cheat sheet, newsletters. So these are all internal documents for your own company that okay. you can provide it. You just loaded those in there. Just load them in there. So we're saying upload files, right? Okay. And then right. on the capabilities, this is important. So I gave it the ability to browse the web and do mm -hmm. this stuff, but you can also unselect this and tell it to exclusively use your data. So I if see. you want to use it for your own internal stuff and not pull in stuff from the web, you can do that. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And then the natural question is then, how did I come up with this? What I did is I used ChatGPT to help me write the instructions. So I'm going to show you this. And this really? is in the training. Okay. Yeah, this is in the training video I did, but I'll, I'll just show you. I'm going to do duplicate tab here. This is how I freeze up my computer. I just open a lot of stuff. But <laughs> <laughs> So I'm just going to go back to the main ChatGPT. Oh, let me show you this really quick before I do that. So I come over here to my account, click on that and go to my GPTs. And then you just click on create a GPT. So that's okay. how you start. Okay. On the new ones mm -hmm. to make your own. So I'm going to come back over here, make sure I'm in chat GPT 4.0. This is the new one. Okay. And I'm just going to say, I mean, this is how I'm going to prompt it. I want to create a custom. GPT for, let's just, let's do one for you. Tell me about a GPT that you might want to create. This is often the imaginary world, but we were envisioning using chat GPT to create a way for, if people became enamored with our book and they read it and they liked the characters that we could create a way for them to interact with the characters. So imagine a character that has a certain mindset and predispositions and whatnot. Is there a way that could be a way that they could answer questions or you'd have to tell them about the characters, of course. But, but I was wondering if it even be as, based on what I was seeing here, that we could take things that they said in our story and feed it in there that they could then draw reference to. Okay. Seems so like, I, mean, I know I it's all create, it's not a marketing thing, but it's a way to, it's a way to build following of existing. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a marketing thing. So I want to create a custom GPT that would allow people to interact with characters in my new fiction book. The book is about, just give me a high level. It's a murder mystery, uh, geopolitical thriller. Intriguing intrigue. I will have a draft of the book complete soon that I can upload to custom instructions. 
<laughs> wow. Help me write, let's say, a draft of custom instructions for users of this GPT so they can interact with major characters from the book. <laughs> That's uh, the idea. Yeah, let's say. For now, let's call them character A, B, and C. All right, let's just see what it does. Oh, that is fascinating. Isn't that cool? That is just crazy. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, wow. Ready to start? Let's talk to character A first and then dive into the world of da 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 That is really incredible. So this idea, the person who introduced us to Nancy is a guy that I used to work, we used to be business partners many years ago and uh, our careers took different paths, but we've reconnected and she helped publish his book. And then uh, he made a referral for us and that's how we got connected. And it was his, idea. he's going to uh, help us with, with our business strategy overall for the release of this book, not just marketing related, but all elements. And he came up with this idea which sounded really far-fetched to me when he first said it, but based on what <laughs> you just did and what I saw, looks yeah. entirely, and, and not difficult, entirely yeah, reasonable. It's yeah, it's not difficult. So let's just say, okay, let's do this. Okay, so is this the instruction set I should use in your custom GPT settings, or can you write that for me to copy paste? Okay, so here we go. Okay, so it's writing its own custom instructions for our new GPT. So it's, it's <laughs> it just made them stuff up. up, and it's not yeah. even far off. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this. So it told it how to keep the instructions. Okay, so we're gonna do that. And then we're gonna come over to our custom GPTs and we're gonna, we're just gonna build one. Okay, so we're gonna skip this. We're gonna to go to configure. What's the name of your book? The, the title is The Amalfi Secret. Can you spell that? A-M-A-L-F-I uh, -A Secret. In fact, we just spoke with Nancy earlier today, and she's going to Italy, and she's going to the Amalfi Coast, which is south of Rome a couple hours. So I just gave it the instructions. Now, conversation starters. Let's see. I'm just going to ask it. <laughs> what conversation starters should I use? Now, you guys can go replace all this stuff with actual stuff. I'll just share this GPT with you. Okay, for character A, the intelligence officer. Character A is he, maybe the chat GT, GPT should have written the book. Look at that. It's amazing. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, so are these the conversation starters for the fields? Oops. In the custom GPT settings. No, okay. Okay, so this is a character A. What are you hiding from me? <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, Conrad, I prior I meant for the user to begin engaging with the characters, but required to guide the AI on how to and want simply more direct prompts for each character to kick off. So I'm just gonna come back over here. And then you could add more, right? So that's just one. So okay. what happens is, and then what you would do is you would upload your draft of your book so that it has all the information from the book. And then you can tell it if you don't want it to web browse, but if you give it web browsing, then it also could bring in some kind yeah. of cool ideas. That's actually, as I thought about this, 
something I've gone bo- both sides with because it's going to go it, with web browsing. It, there's no telling what it might find that, mm-hmm. but at the same time, it, it could find a lot of things that would be very pertinent. So I, yeah. but I, I'm inclined to think probably it should, but it, we'd, I guess maybe we'd want it to perhaps be limited somehow in the sense of so much of what's out there is, you know, who knows, veracity of things. Okay. So here we go. So I clicked on the prompt. What are you hiding from me? And so he leans back in the chair with a cool glaze. <laughs> Smirk. My <tugging>. gosh. <laughs> I didn't know that's a strong word. Let's just say certain details need to be protected for the greater good. Oh my goodness. But I suppose I could give you a hint. There are pieces in play right now, far larger than you might realize countries, powerful organizations. It's not just about one side versus the other. It's about shifting alliances. What you should focus on is who benefits from the chaos. Follow that and you might get closer to the truth. Are you kidding me? (laughs) That's amazing. Ask the right questions and maybe I will help you unlock one of those doors. Oh my goodness. That is so cool. What politician should I be looking at? You're getting warmer. (laughs) There's always a politician. Yeah. (laughs) That's awesome. Naturally. (laughs) So this is pretty awesome. Maybe you already know who I'm talking about. Yeah. So you can go so many places. No Mm -hmm. kidding. And I mean, that literally took us, what, 10 minutes? Yeah. You obviously have familiarity with how to do this, but that was just amazing. I, I had no idea. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and click create because then you can edit this. I'm going to share it with you. Oh, thank you. And then all you have to do is once I share it with you, all all you have to do is make sure you have the paid GPT plan, chat GPT Mm -hmm. plan. Yeah. And then you said that's $20 a month. Yeah. Okay. So click on that link and then you will be able to interact with it incredible i wish kathy i wish my wife had seen this she would have been amazed (laughs) let me see here are you on my email address it should come up there you are yep there it is this is recorded i'll send you a recording of it oh thank you that would be wonderful so i just sent it to you and just by the way based on the conversations with nancy this morning the release date is being pushed a little bit instead of February 1st, we're not looking at April 1st. So we're going to have more time to compile and gather the, all of the things that we want to do around the, that's good. It gives us more time. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Think show Nancy this when uh, you talk to to her next, Uh, she'll be blown away. (laughs) She will be blown away because we have a sequel that we're already working on. And what I'm seeing here is there could be some opportunities to help us expand the story they talked about how AI can replace certain creative things. I don't know if that's entirely right, but it certainly is a major supplement to, at a minimum. Oh, yeah. I use it for brainstorming and ideas all the time. That's fantastic. I appreciate this time you've taken. Thank you so much. Oh, um, sure. My pleasure. Yeah. And we're we're still working through, we hadn't made any decisions, but we're still working through our ideas. And we have a lot of feelers that we've started, but we haven't mm-hmm. settled on anything. We would... We've looked at from just from a website appearance standpoint, we have some ideas and I guess it, 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 the website development, are there any constraints? Can we, can, as far as design, if we said, we'd like it to look something like this, is that workable? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. Good. Yeah. Because we looked at some author websites and I think we have a sense of what in our genre, what would like it to look like yeah, thematically? That's super helpful for my designer, Amanda. So yeah. yeah, we love it when people show us stuff they like. Okay, good. All right. Thank you again and uh, have, a, have a great day. Okay, you too. Good to Bye. see Take you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye.